Hello, welcome to the Koi Warehouse. This is the first in a series of Koi Health videos. Today we're going to be discussing uh, identifying Koi with parasitic problems. Early detection of Koi with parasites can be quite difficult as they show very few clinical signs. Uh, later when the infestation becomes more apparent, uh, the clinical signs are Koi uh, hanging around the water surfaces uh, where the water returns into the pond, um, flashing, um, even jumping out of the water, clamp fins, and the heavy production of sub mucus. Uh, when we say flashing, we actually mean the act of a koi actually turning on its side and flicking against any surface that it can find uh, to relieve itself of the infestation. Um, parasites fall into a, a, a category called ectoparasites. Um, these are then fall into two categories really, ones that we can see with the naked eye and ones that where we would need a microscope to identify them. The ones we can see with our naked eye are Argus, which is fish lice, um, Lernia, which is anchor worm, and the most common ones we can see are uh, flukes, white spot, costia, chilindinella, to name a few. Right, um, so let's move on and see if we can identify some koi parasites. Okay, uh, we're in the medical centre of the Koi Warehouse. It, uh, this is where most of these videos will take place. It's totally independent of the, the retail outlet. has its own entrance, its own biosecurity systems, its own water supply. Um, this is generally where Koi um, come to be evaluated and then we can assess what sort of treatment would be necessary. These are the tanks of the Koi Warehouse, the custom made tanks which uh, have their own water supply, air supply, um, what we generally do is we, we would fill one tank with fresh water, um, another tank also with water but containing some anaesthetic. Uh, we would then transfer from one tank to the other tank, uh, sedate the fish. Once we've done the scrape we can actually then move the fish back into the fresh water to recover. Uh, today we have a customer's koi with us that isn't very well. We've already eliminated the possibility that it's a, a water problem and we're now going to proceed to see if it's uh, a parasitic problem. Uh, normally, koi dealers and uh, more experienced hobbyists wouldn't feel the need to anaesthetise a koi, but for this demonstration, we're actually going to go ahead to do that. Um, I would also recommend that most amateurs sedate the fish in some manner. So, let's go ahead and uh, sedate the fish. Right, we're now going to place the koi in some anaesthetic. usually only takes a few minutes and then we can safely take a few of screen. As you can now see the fish is uh, being anaesthetised and is showing little resistance. We'll just give it a couple more seconds and then we'll take a mucus scraping from it. Right, here we are. Um, the koi is now uh, totally anaesthetised and it's very safe to take a, a scraping from the fish. As you can see uh, by the redness in the fish, um, there's something obviously uh, not quite right. Uh, we've eliminated the water quality uh, by doing water tests and now we're going to do the mucus scrape to um, either try to identify uh, a problem or to see what type of parasites are, are on the koi. Um, we usually take a scrape from um, just behind the eye, through the upper column, and just down to the top of the body. Uh, another good spot that uh, we find sometimes that we can't um, find any parasites on that scrape is, is just from the mouth backwards and across, and that gives us uh, a general um, indication of what might be actually on the fish. Okay, so what we'll do now is we'll um, We'll pop the fish back into some fresh water to uh, recover while we look at the, the mucus scrapes. Right, we have our mucus scrape in front of us. Um, it's a simple procedure. Um, obviously put the mucus into the centre of the fly as such. Um, you can add a little drop of water if you wish. Um, I know quite a lot of people do this. It just thins out the mucus layer makes the parasites, if there's any on there, more visible. 
So we'll just pop this uh, under the microscope. Um, as you can see from the actual mucus scrape, this fish has quite a large uh, number of a parasite called costia. You can probably just make them out, uh, they look like little black commas. As you can see, the koi is now uh, recovered from its uh, anaesthetic and I'll be going shortly home. Okay, we have now shown you how to successfully take a, a mucus scraping from a koi. As you can see by this example, uh, the koi had quite a heavy infestation of costia. Uh, the recommended treatment for this would be a potassium permanganate bath. Uh, this would be 22 gallons of water, uh, one gram of potassium for one hour with, with some aeration. Um, it's worth checking other fish in the pond to see if the levels were similar or if any at all. And if they were found to be similar, then obviously all the koi would have to have a bath and um, followed up by a pond treatment. Um, if the levels were very low on the other fish, you could possibly get away um, with treating the one koi with a bath and then follow up four to five days later with a pond treatment rather than the big bath. Thank you for watching uh, this video. Hope you'll join us soon.